Hello, Mavs. I'm Asus. And I'm Ian, and welcome to Verbose. The UTA English Podcast. Hey, guys, and uh, welcome to Verbose, the UTA English Podcast. This is the pilot episode. It is. And uh, I'm, I'm, like I said in the intro, I'm Asus, and uh, with me, is, as always, is the lovely Ian. Yeah, you gotta say hi. Lovely as described. <laughs> okay. All right, and uh, the reason why we're starting this podcast is kind of like, well, there seems to be a stigma around English majors in that we're just kind of like pretentious. Stuffy. Or, mm-hmm, exactly, or we're just, we don't know how to relax, mm-hmm. and uh, many other. Or we're grammar Nazis. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So we're just kind of doing this podcast just to kind of dispense with all that and show people that we can be relaxed. We can be chill. And we can. Yeah, we, We're we chilling know. right now. Exactly, exactly. Um, and we also are hoping to educate people that are either prospective English majors or current English majors with talking about things that are applicable if you want to pursue a degree in English. Yeah. Um, just to get a little personal history, I'm uh, currently a full-time student here at UTA. I'm a minor in writing. I like to read. A lot write occasionally, even though it's not very good. So, but I'm trying. I'm making the effort. And uh, what about you, Ian? Yeah, I'm a I'm a full time student, also English major, obviously, with a minor in creative writing. And I love to write. I do a lot of it. Uh, getting better, but it's not the best right now. Well, you're actually a published novelist, man. I do. Yeah, I, I have a novel published on Amazon. But uh, this is not the platform to advertise. So. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. No, no need for a plug. It's okay. But yeah, you're accomplished. Um, all right, so today's episode is, so you want to be an English major. Mm-hmm. So, you know, let's just say that you either went through the trials and tribulations of uh, basics in college, or you have uh, just knew straight out of the gate in high school that you wanted to pursue English. Right. This is for you, because you're probably wondering, or have probably been discouraged already. Um, you're either going to become a teacher, or you're going to become a novelist with a lot of luck. Right. But we're going to discuss skills, and we're going to discuss how an English degree is actually practical in the real world. Yeah, there's a lot of different skills and things that you learn uh, that can be applied to any job, not just one that's associated with English. Exactly. That's exactly what I've been telling people. But no, if I gotta be a teacher or I gotta be a writer. There's no in between. So we're just gonna go ahead and kick things off. Oh, I almost forgot, Ian. I almost forgot. What? Uh, we're gonna. This is our. Uh, seg- this is our segue question. So, oh yeah, a little bit more brief history. I'm not a journalist. I'm not a. I don't have any background in journalism. So, but it's okay. This is pretty chill. This is pretty chill. It so, is. Yeah. I almost forgot our intro question. But you caught yourself. Yes, I did. So I'm pretty professional. I'm, I'm a pro. Um, what was your gateway book, Ian? What got you interested in literature in general? Uh, it would have to be The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Why? Um, my dad handed it to me when I was 12, told me to read it because I didn't do any reading and I just played video games. Nice. And I read it. Then I read it again and again and again and I was hooked. And it, that's what that's what got me into it. What was it about the Hobbit? Was it the, the actual Hobbits, or was it just the story? Or the... Man, it was it was the writing. I love I love dragons. Mm-hmm. That that was a big deal for me. I love dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just I loved Bilbo Bilbo Baggins as a character. Man, it's a good book. You guys should pick it up if you haven't already. All right, cool, cool. Uh, what was your gateway book, Jesus? My gateway book was. Artemis Fowl by oh, wow. Ian Colfer. Thank you for actually knowing what I was talking about. Yes, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. I work at a bookstore. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a fabulous book series, and it's just kind of weird because the chosen one is a rich billionaire psychopath. So it was it was just really weird and really interesting, but I remember when I read it in middle school, I was just hooked. I read the whole series. Just It was fantastic. Sounds a little off-color from what is the, the normal protagonist type. Definitely. But, uh, definitely. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Yeah, so that's what got me interested in uh, English and writing and all that. Hmm. I, I had originally planned to be a novelist, and once I actually gave writing a shot, I said, no way. No, because uh, it takes a lot more commitment than it, everybody it does. It takes a lot of commitment. Definitely, definitely. All right, but now that we got that out of the way, yes. we'll actually get to the skills. Yes. All right, so 
there are a lot of skills that as an English major you will develop and learn uh, if you try it all in your classes. <laughs> uh, and if you're willing to learn them, you can pick them up pretty well. And uh, hey, Suze, why don't you walk into the first okay, one? Okay, yeah, sure thing, sure thing. All right, so number one, the ability to analyze and think critically about subjects uh, and being able to dissect complex uh, concepts. Basically, we've all been faced with a big abstract concept or just something that's complex yeah. where there's many facets to it. And as an English major, you learn how to take dense texts that are just littered with so many references, so many metaphors, colorful language, that as English majors, we just have to go in and we just take the time to really break it down into, all right, so what is this actually about? What is the main point of this? And this is pretty important because in any job where you're faced with anything remotely complex, or remotely complicated, you can use your skills as an English major to just take that big abstract concept and just break it down into little manageable chunks, mm -hmm. which will just make the whole experience of solving the problem that much more easy. Right, and we use critical thinking skills every day, uh, especially when it comes to certain posts on social media. You gotta be able to think critically about the information we're absorbing on a daily basis so that we don't make wrong conclusions and uh, be participating in the fake news. Right. Fake air quotes. Uh, yeah, that really good thing. Um, so number two, strong written skills. Um, and this can be applicable in uh, business or any job that requires written email correspondence and proposals. And it can also help whenever it comes to marketing as well because you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to find a way to state what your intent is right and especially in marketing you want to do that in like the shortest amount possible right so it's applicable in that but it's also applicable because um in especially in business a lot of people forget that email correspondence is very important right and it's a very important skill to know how to convey tone how to convey your message through your language because you don't want to end up offending someone that potentially could bring a lot of income or be a really big win for your business. Right, and uh, it's especially important when working with multi-cultured audiences, you know, to be able to convey what you're, what you're trying to get across in a coherent and concise manner. As well as the fact that with strong written skills, you can also sell yourself via uh, cover letters or resumes and uh, you know, writing about yourself in job applications so that you can actually get a job. Exactly. So many resumes are just like, graduated from X, majored in X, please hire me so I'm not homeless and I can eat. Right. Um, but if you're an English major and you are already used to being able to articulate and use um, engaging language, it'll stand out more whenever you're actually applying. It's just like, oh man, so-and-so really knows how to sell themselves. I wonder right. what else they can sell. Right. And uh, the last skill that uh, you develop as an English major is a little bit more abstract, but it is still something that can be very useful, and that is imagination. So whenever you're given a prompt, that's all you're given. It's just like, write about this, and then the rest is up to you. So everything is coming from us. We can use the information that we have provided via sources, but it's up to us to create a cohesive uh, and engaging paper and that's all of that is coming from us and the ability to just create in general is a very and uh, is something that you can hone right. into a skill so while um, I'm pretty like you uh, you've, you've told me about your creative process before and I am not capable of that <laughs> my mind just doesn't go that far I can't develop worlds I have a hard time thinking of characters but since I am an English major and I spend so much of my time writing constantly then I am able to at least be able to um, empathize, mm -hmm. uh, speak differently to a different audience, and just really uh, engage an audience. So, what Imagination is something that a lot of people uh, primarily relegate to creative writing. Um, but honestly, imagination is uh, being able to think outside the box, and that can be useful in any number of situations. Uh, like Jesus said, uh, can be used to take a 
take a bit of information that you've been given and extrapolate from that something longer, like a report. Um, it's being able to, to think about how to phrase things, being able to convince people of things. Um, it's, it's a very persuasive thing when you have a good imagination. As well as, you know, if you are a creative writer, being able to create compelling characters or make a interesting world, which I've had to do quite often. Yeah, and uh, it can also assist in marketing as well, because that's basically all that it is. It's just using the power of imagination to market to a specific audience. Right. And being able to think imaginatively. Um, it will definitely help in a business uh, in a business like that. Right. So, like it looks like, those are the three main skills already. Yeah. And uh, there there are subsets of these skills. This is this is not an exhaustive list, but it's it's three of the main ones. And you know, despite what people may have told you, uh, employers are looking for people with these types of skills. They are uh, looking for people that can market themselves that have. A reasonable amount of imagination, being able to problem solve, being able to think critically about things and assess, as well as process and create information and content. Exactly. To all the prospective English majors, I promise you, you will have a job. Do not be scared. It's okay. You're not going to end up being a struggling artist. You're not going to end up... Because uh, a lot of people assume, I don't know about you, but whenever I tell them that I'm an English major, they're like, oh, are you going to be a teacher? And in my particular instance, I'm not going to be. Right. And they always ask, what are you going to do then? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know. I guess just waste my money, wait, wait, waste my time. But there are many different kinds of jobs that are yeah. looking for the skills that we have, especially Absolutely. in the tech world. The tech writing. Yeah, yeah that's uh, booming right now. Right. People are looking for search engine optimize, optimization. Mm-hmm. Um, especially uh, technical writing as well, right. so which we'll probably we can probably mention in another podcast, yeah, episode, we can. in another episode. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's been a great time here with Jesus. And oh well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you can uh, hashtag us at uh, at UTA English hashtag UTA English um, or hashtag verbose. Actually, if you guys want to, you can tell us your gateway book. What yeah. got you guys? into reading and what got you guys just excited about literature in general? Let us know on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, we'll try and respond to you. Maybe maybe we've read the book, maybe we haven't, and uh, we'll just see what you guys say. Yeah, and uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in mm-hmm. to this uh, pilot episode of the podcast, mm-hmm. and we'll catch you guys next time.